Hello, my juicy co-creators. Lidu here. I'm in London with uh, Lars. And you're Danish. I love it. I'm French, American. You're Danish. And we're meeting here in London. How perfect. I love your hat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if I do, but <laughs> I have to break it, you know. Yeah. So I think it suits you so perfectly. And I'm thank you. And I'm excited to be interviewing you. And speaking of, and I know some of you are gonna love this, of Magdalene, Joshua, and the seer and the grail and all of that, all those amazing uh, names that we hear of um, that are out there in our consciousness. And maybe there's been some miscommunication and some information. Um that was hold it back, but now we're opening up and a lot of my interviews are around this feminine energy coming through and, 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 and what's really going on. So I'm excited to speak with you, Lars. Um, I, and I want to thank Watkins book because I know you're published by them and thanks to them, we were able to connect really quickly. And none of those interviews are, are, are done, I believe, by coincidence. And there is this magical kind of tapestry. And, and, and lately, the, the word seer really came about in, in a few different interviews. And, and I'm kind of intrigued by that because we hear of psychics and we hear of, 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 of divinities and, 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 and oracles. But seer is, is a little bit different. I know that you were in contact with 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 one of them uh years ago you you had a uh, very uh quite a childhood a lot of suffering uh even later on as an adult you, you in parallel you were kind of a songwriter also and a singer so so much has happened but tell us about this moment when you were uh, you know 10 years old and and you lost your sister and 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 start seeing the world in a different way and it was quite a very painful painful time huh Yes, uh, the whole proce process opened me up, you, you know, uh, it really uh, changed my life completely and um, I was suddenly, uh, it was like somebody just, uh, what do you call it, uh, the veil uh, between uh, in uh, between this reality and, and some other reality just disappeared, you know, overnight and I became very sensitive. I started uh, looking through people. I could hear uh, hear what they really were thinking, and I couldn't find out because they 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 thought one thing, said another, and did some a third thing. You know, it was really frightening for me, ten years old, and I was starting to de develop different kinds of uh, uh, other kind of perceptions. Mm. Uh, I could feel other f people's pain, and I really, it, I took it up on, up, up, uh, upon me. me uh, so it was very difficult, yes. Mm -hmm. And at the same time that you were having, and what you called a painful uh, Kundalini type of experience, you were receiving messages, or how, and you were recording that through your journal. I mean, how was that working? You know, yeah, that's another thing maybe uh, about this. Uh, I started developing uh, some Kundalini uh, kind of movements that came about every night. But I, when I met the CEO many, many years later, he told me that this was very normal for everybody. When you become, become a sexual person, when Eros is awakened, when you are 10, 12 or whatever, for me it was around there when I was 10, uh, these things happen, but if you have a sh you you are in in, a, in an accident or have get a shock or something, it can really be a painful and long lasting uh, process. Mostly, we just experience it like that and then we forget all about it. But for me, to me, it was something that lasted two and two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and it wasn't uh, that I. I uh, got any messages like that I just the veil was just removed mm. you know so, so you were seeing people differently and having an insight in their story huh? I think I picked up on how you know when every seer and everybody is in fact a seer in one way or the other mm -hmm. we tend to when we get connected to to something you know we are living in an intelligent universe and there's information all around us but when we connect to it uh, it this uh, information has to go through you it has to be filtered 
to who you are and all your prejudices and whatever you have, uh, fears and stuff. So um, that goes for me too also when I was a kid. At that point, I didn't know anything about anything. You know, nobody had told me about what, what's this. And so it was just so frightening. And uh, I could see things that other people mm, didn't seem to, to see in the same way or, or experience. So I really couldn't get this together. I couldn't find out yeah. what, how is this, what, what I'm doing here, what, what, what is happening yeah. to me. So you could speak to your parents or they were some kind of open to it? I started writing, you know, okay. and they, they didn't tell me that they found out that they knew about my writing. At one point I was taken to a psychologist and he said that uh, he couldn't take the responsibility for me if they didn't stop, made me stop this writing then he thought that I would go mad. But my parents, of course, they knew that, that w me writing was what could save me. Mm. So they just uh, let me have that. Uh, and I think also they had so much on their uh, plate after my sister died, you know, and we were strictly working class, trying to get it together, you know, and my mother was a hairdresser, my father was a taxi driver. So they really had enough to... So mm -hmm. I think it it suited them well that I that I could write and uh, yeah. What's well, interesting to to notice and say, and a lot of us have experienced that, is when when something like that or tragedy happens during it, we think we're we're responsible for it. Mm. Uh, you, you thought on some levels there has been some kind of forgiveness, I guess, to to to, to do. Mm, I I think that beca maybe because of 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 my karmatic background, I had to go through this. And I had to go through it without any form of, call it light or help. or So it was not before before I was uh, 15 years old that uh, something happened that I, I get a, got an envelope one day with the post but without any sender of it. And in it there was a book from uh, the Sufi master Hasrat in Ayat Khan full of aphorisms and, and sayings. And that really saved my life, mm. really. What, what sentence really resonated with you at the time? The first one I, I remember was, uh, and that really made me uh, connect, was uh, if you will go forward towards us, we will bow down and lift you up. And that really resonated with me. So I thought, okay, I'm not alone. There is somebody who else who knows about these things. Mm. So Did you start communicating with entities or even angels or light beings or whatever we can call it uh, then? Or was it only later on when you met this year? You know, I was so surrounded by all this every day that, uh, and because of, uh, it was so scary for me because I couldn't connect. I, I just wanted to, 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 to have it to stop, you know, because it was too overwhelming and too much for me. I just wanted to be normal. Mm. I, as other kids, you know, mm -hmm. but um, after I went out of school, I, I started, uh, I, I went into the music uh, business, I was uh, in a group, and I was not, had, had no ambition at all, I was just musical, so that became uh, a way of, of being here, mm -hmm. uh, I had an identity and yeah. made some money and stuff. Was that in Denmark? And so you're a professional. Yes, that was in Denmark. And there's one, another thing that really made a big impression on me. Uh, when I was 18 years old, we 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 went on a tour to Israel where we had a commitment for, uh, tour for three months. And after a month there, touring around in Israel, playing music, suddenly it dawned on me. You know, tonight we are going to Nazareth. Tomorrow Bethlehem, and then it's. Uh, the Sea of Galilee and Jerusalem, and suddenly, I thought, wow! Mm. It dawned on me that we were right there, you know. Mm. And uh, since that, I found out I've been always been connected to that place mm. in in many ways. How do you explain all the suffering that you went through, though? Because even later on, you went through another three years in the bed and really feeling uh, terrible physically, from what you're saying. How do you explain that you had to go through so much, or that we have as human beings to go through this suffering? I think it's 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 the one gift that we get that we never realize is a, a gift, uh, and I did not either. But it is a kind of cleansing. 
that's something that you we have to go through but if we can if we can see through it and see that behind it or deep hidden within the pain or whatever we are going through there is a gift mm. the experience and what we learn and if it results in us being more conscious of what we are doing because consciousness 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 is the real key <clears throat> and why we are here uh, so so i think that's a that's what it's really about it's a, a cleansing process and and for us to waking up you know pain is the messenger yeah. and the message is wake up mm. when you were in the bed <coughs> and, and, and you were suffering at some point mm. you, you got the message that okay i'm going to take on like the suffering of the whole planet now i might i might as well or mm -hmm. something yeah. to that extent it, it, was that for you or is that something that you recommend now how what do you recommend to people to actually snap out of the suffering if they're there physically <coughs> mentally emotionally spiritually normally when people go through uh, any kind of suffering of course they don't want to do it so they are complaining and they're Oh, isn't it uh, bad for me? And blah, 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 blah. Instead, you could really make it meaningful to to be it. not for yourself, but for the whole world. You can take upon you the pain of the world, and that may sound make a little maniac, but it really makes a difference. And I can't stop thinking about without any comparison. That's very important. That what Jesus did when he went on the cross mm -hmm. was not to take away our sin. Mm -hmm. Because if he really did that, there was no reason for us to be here. Mm -hmm. You know? We have to, to take responsibility for ourselves. So him uh, taking upon him the pain of the world, just try in that gesture he tried to show us that we can make the meaning le the meaningless meaningful. Mm -hmm. You can give meaning to everything you do, even pain. So that's that's a message, I think. Mm -hmm. And w and we're gonna go uh, in in greater detail on the message too that you got and and what you've learned through going through those writings, huh? And, and the Armenic writings, uh, and and uh, and all that. But uh, the the last little piece that is important in your story to talk about is you're meeting this seer. Mm -hmm at some point that really helped you and that you spent quite a lot of time with. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, he was he was very precise. He was a former military man. So he was very... <laughs> and uh, that was not the, maybe the last one I, I needed, uh, I thought. But that was exactly what I needed. And uh, he was so intimidating in many ways because he, he, he could look straight through you. But on the other hand... I could look straight through to him too, because we were we were meant to meet for other reasons that him helping me. I also had to help him. Mm -hmm. So uh, you knew he. Why, why did you knew he was real, and why did you know that that, that it, there was there was really something there that you needed to learn through him? Because you 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 dedicated your I mean part of your time to 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 learning through him. So because there you know there, I mean in the spiritual world and teachers there's a lot of a uh, bit of everything. So how do you how did you know he was real, and how can we know when a teacher is real for us and good for us? Just imagine that you have been lying on a bed for three years, nobody can help you. And suddenly here, you talk to someone on the telephone and within 10 minutes, he have got you up of the bed and healed you. Then you know... That, that would do it, yeah. Yeah, I think you don't need any more <laughs> probation. You just go with it. But and, 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 and an important thing that I learned also through him, that is always trust your first impression. Yeah. Go with it. Because if you start thinking about it, forget it, then it's gone. Mm. So w before the person can interfere, and I know because every time I interfere with anything or in my business, it goes just down the drain. Just forget it. Just go with the flow and be, try to stay connected. Mm. And then you know exactly when it's right or when it's wrong. Mm. It is when you start questioning mm. what you, you're feeling, then you have lost it completely. Yeah. The doubts, yeah. Yes. So, uh, I mean, you just try to, to, to be, uh, to act ethical and be all right and treat others uh, 
um, the way you wanted to be treated. I mean, it's not so. Uh, yeah. It's not. I mean, it's so very easy. In fact, it's very very easy. You know, just yeah. go and do it. Yeah. Don't talk about it. Do it. How did you? How did you know? Because this is a, a the, the trilogy. Huh? How did you? How did this started? How did you knew that you had to write a book? I, I really didn't. But but the first day I'm, uh, when I met this seer down the the mountain of Montségur, when we came down uh, the mountain, I heard myself say, "I think that this meeting will result in me writing three books." And when we came down uh, from the mountain, just in the evening when we sat by the fire, he said. He, then he responded and said, yes, I'll be part of two of them. And the third one, uh, there will be somebody else. Yeah. And that was com exactly how it was. Yeah. It came to be. Yeah. And, uh, and so, so what are some of those, those things? How, uh, so this was over seven years, a course of seven years. And how did this... It, 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 this all started in, in the late 1990s, in 19... I fell ill in 1994, and three years uh, later, I, I came in connection with him. So it all happened from there, and the next seven years, yes. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the elements of your own progression? And do you feel your own evolution throughout the seven years is something similar that we're all going through? Or I mean, why did you decide to write this book? I just had to. Yeah. It, I was committed to do it. Yeah. So there was no do you want it or yeah. do you, don't you? I just had to do it, I, and I did it, and uh, I got so much help. And uh, I can even today, I can open it, and I, uh, there's a lot of things I can't uh, account for. But of course, uh, mostly the things I've experienced, because I don't talk about anything that I haven't experienced myself. So, But still, there's, there's things in that book that, uh, wow, where did that came from? And yeah. so... Um, Let's open it randomly to a place to see what, what, what we can talk here about, because there's so many teachings. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, oh, that's a good question. So. How about that one? What was going on here? <laughs> yeah, that's a nice... Uh, the isogenic being, that's the... Let's show the picture. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, something to do with uh, the masculine and the feminine becoming one. I think that's a picture of. But um, uh, yeah, like here. What you you said uh, um, about the, the 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 Mary and the Mary Magdalene coming together and seeing the, the, this picture and reuniting. This is a big part of your message, I guess. Yeah, it all happened uh, actually before I met the seer. All back uh, in in the eighties, I started working with the Magdalene, and uh, it came all through me learning the Aramaic language, which was the language of Jesus of Magdalene. And because I discovered that the psychology behind that language is so profound and so exciting and so deep and universal and spiritual, that without it, without knowing about, it, you don't have to actually speak the language, but you have to understand the psychology behind the language. It opens up to all the scriptures and to everything that you can. You can even take the the psychology with you and use it in reading other kind of messages and stuff. It's so opening and and one of the things is that I found out that um, about uh, Jesus when he talks about the bridal chamber of the masculine and the feminine going into the. It's all in the New Testament, you know. But at that time, I had, hadn't any clue about it. So, of course, when I read it and, and I found it was all there, I was so uh, just astounded that mm. I had... Discovering a treasure. Yeah, I had to go with it. So uh, I found out that the, the feminine really uh, cont contains two uh, elements. The, 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 you could say the, the Madonna and the dancer or what you call uh, the Madonna and the prostitute, or the Mother Mary and the Magdalene, or the dove or the snake, mm. the, um, the dove and the moon priestess. So it could also be agape and love or eros. So when those two get together, you have the, the complete feminine. Without one of them, the, the, the feminine is incomplete. And for many years, it has only been the Madonna. The rest 
have been turned into pornographic this and that, and that's why our society is so uh, mm. pornographic in everything. So it makes so much sense when when it happened that so many books together with Dan Brown's also, but you should remember there are so many other books that came in with this message on different levels, of course, because they, they had they, they have to uh, this message had to be. Um, exposed on so many levels so, so as much people as possible could to know about it but it for me it started really in the 80s mm. and uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, so what is some of the message because i guess we're all carrying the masculine and the feminine within us so what is what is the work for us to do what what do you feel our society or us as human beings right now need to need to see and 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 heal maybe yeah, we have to heal the, the the sexual part of us. It has to be healed because of the the suppression that has been going on for so many years. So whether we are Christians or not, I think we carry the Yeshua and the Magdalene uh, archetype within us in one way or the other. Mm-hmm. So we have to open up to that. And to in order to do that, we... we, we I understand why a lot of people can't, when they hear the word or the name Jesus, they just, they can't say, or Holy Spirit and uh, stuff like that. But we have to understand that there's so much deeper meaning to those uh, um, topics uh, that we have to learn about them in order to understand what it's really about. Because a lot of people think it's, it's, oh, it's all about Jesus and Mary Magdalene being married and having kids and there's a bloodline and stuff. Forget it. It's not interesting. It's completely dull knowledge. Of course, it's 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 interesting that Mary. But I mean, we have to go much further. Mm. We have to see that they were initiated, both of them, mm. and, and that Mary Magdalene uh, almost hundred uh, percent got her education by the therapists uh, in Mary Artis, uh, the Lake of Mary Artis outside Alexandria where men and women could go in in equality and learn all about the stars and healing and you name it. I mean, it was really an education that made you a complete doctor. And in Magdalene's, you know, the Magdalene, Magda is a kind of initiation name. There was a lot of Magdalene's, Mm -hmm. but there was only one Magdalene, the Magdalene. That was Mary the Magdalene, and she was uh, probably married to Jesus, but it was in another sense of the word that we understand today. It was they were equal. She she was uh, the teacher of the the female, uh, and he of the male mm. Uh, mm. followers. Mm. So that was what. Yeah. What does it take to be initiated? Nowadays, those days. Yes, it's a big topic. Yes, <laughs> it is. But if if you if you go into the New Testament, you could actually read all about it. When Jesus went out forty days in the desert, we can read in the Aramaic. He set himself in an unprotected state, in an unprotected state. It's very interesting. What, what does that mean to put yourself in an unprotected state? You're opening up to meet the wild animals of the desert, your own shadows. So the first thing everybody must do, and a lot of people uh, don't really want to... It's pretty scary. Yeah, yeah that is to, to, to work with your own shadows, mm-hmm. because everybody has a shadow somewhere, and a lot of them, we find out, is hidden in the sexual department. That means if you have a, a real good partner, you should have the guts to share your most intimate fantasies with the other part. That could be very difficult because if the other part are not open for that, I mean, forget it. Mm. So if you open up your doors to your inner self and invite somebody in there, that person, whoever it is, a woman or a man, must go in there without any uh, prejudices. And it doesn't matter if that person doesn't understand anything of what they experience in, experience inside there. They must just go with it and respect it mm. and embrace it. If they can't do that, I mean, forget it. 
You, you mean forget it because there's a lot of partners that are just not ready to hear this stuff. Yes, but uh, then they they have to, they have to be ready for it because there's no going in uh, over the fence where or anything. You have to really commit yourself to this. You have to be honest and mature, and that's what needed. You have to be a mature human being in order to do this. And childlike too. Because we a lot of us, uh, yes. or more and more, we, we feel like the more we to get the layers out, we are also becoming more childlike. So it's yeah. it's both. Huh? It's again another paradox. Yeah, but there's also another thing that that a lot of people think that because they have this dirty fantasy or uh, or any s sexual drive or something, they 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 really think this is not spiritual. I can't. It's really. Forget about it because it's it's on a complete another level, and the moment we understand that all those fantasies really are part of a something more collective that is is being played out through every one of us. It's nothing personal. You shouldn't be so scared about it. I think you, if you have a good partner, it could help a lot of people uh, being healed if they could. Uh, play out that fantasy, or just have the guts to talk about it, you know? My God, what are, what are we co-creating here? Oh. <laughs> because after that, it's a, it's, there will be a shadow. You know, all the, the, the gold that we are really looking for is hidden underneath the shadow. Mm. And one thing is the sexual th part of it, but there are so many other yeah. parts of the shadow. And that was really what they did when they went went into the mystery school, the first thing everybody had to do, also Yeshua, when he went into the Nazarene mystery school and the Essene mystery school, they had to go 40 days in the desert in order to set themselves in an unprotected state. And that's something nobody really wants. Have you met somebody who wants to put themselves in an unprotected state? No. Everybody is protecting themselves and they are hiding. You know, to some degrees, even even calling light beings for protection. I mean, there it is. I tell you something. I went into the secret cave, at least in the Montsouir, and I was connected to some beings in there, or within myself or in the high. I was connected to, and I asked the question: How long are human beings going to look for God and search for God? And the answer was. They, was, they were never meant to. But if they could come out of hiding, so maybe God could find them. And in that, I understood that hiding really meant all our prejudice, our, all our fear, all our... To be simply vulnerable and authentic. And then we meet... If you can... And that exactly. If you can put yourself in an unprotected state, that means come out of hiding. Mm so God can find you. Stop pretending. Yes, that's exactly what it's all about. Mm. And to pretend that nobody is a sexual person, for example, because I'm very, very spiritual now, and I'm very, very holy, and we are not going to talk about this dirty thing. Then, of course, you, you are just creating one more shadow. Mm. And that's exactly what we have been through, through the, the churches and all that. Don't talk about it. We couldn't do it. And, mm. Just see what it what it has brought us. Just see what it brought the the Catholic Church, all the priests in America who have been. Uh, no, not only in America, I think all around the world with the children and the so pedophiles. It it tells us that there is you create shadows if you if you are not going out in the open and just pronounce it. I, exactly like when when man invented or or, or in uh, we we tried to to split the atom. In order to find God there, we thought that God was yeah, in. Yeah. We created the shadow instead of this, the God, shadow of God, the atom bomb. And that's the way we'll continue mm -hmm. if we don't stop being afraid of mm. pronouncing what it's all about and go out in the open. Mm -hmm. this, that me doesn't mean that you and I are go supposed to go down on the street and listen, I'm a very, uh, and this and that. But if we have somebody, a partner to work with, that's really what it's all about. And if we can do that in, in equal respect for each other, we have any chance uh, of, 
of success, being a success and we can go in and uh, we can go much deeper in our spiritual work mm-hmm. but it takes guts and it takes uh, a, 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 a good partner of course it does mm-hmm. but we can and, all and self-respect and love because all of the work of is course. starts here no of course self-respect because a lot of people uh, don't have any partners so we can um, unite the the masculine and feminine in ourselves and i think a lot of people when they have been in a lot of relationships and they found out oh now we can't do this anymore because why i've been together with this man because i couldn't stand to be alone or be on my own that's not a good uh, way of you have to stand on your own two feet and you have to be connected and if you can stand on your own two feet yourself you can stand with everybody mm-hmm. so that's the scene the main Beautiful. Last little message for us, maybe last little thing that you think is important to mention here. We could go on for hours. My goodness, this this has been great. I know that if you want even more, that we we there's another guy on Guy MTV, another interview to uh, 45 minutes if you want to watch that. Mm-hmm. And and there's plenty of work, and there is your book, and there is and you and you're you're touring everywhere, and there is the website, and there's much much information out. But if there's a last little message. For us right now. I think whatever we do, we have to be ethical first of all. If we if we aren't going to be that, just remember everything we send out comes back to us. And we could also say everything you really need and 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 everything you really thirst for is in reality all the things you you yourself need to give. Mm. Oh la la. What a program. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lars. Thank, thank you, you so much. I want to show again the cover of your beautiful book here. I have my copy. Yay. Big, big kisses by Juicy Co-Creators. Wherever you are, please share this video. Spread it around. Let's spread the joy and the love. Thank you. Big, big kisses to all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.